السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We thank him for everything that he has bestowed upon us We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His entire household, all his companions We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى To bless them all and to bless every single one of us Amin my beloved brothers and sisters, last week we went through some of the ways of earning Jannah and Paradise. My goal and your goal should actually be achieving entry into Jannah. Yes, in this world we may have goals. I perhaps want to lead a life that has a little bit of comfort in it, alhamdulillah. I perhaps would like to have a life whereby it would look to me that I am successful and I can at least look after my children or I can at least try and help the next generation. However, the success of this worldly life is very temporary. Remember this, extremely temporary. Take a look at an extremely successful person, a very successful person. He would have to have gone to school. Here I'm talking about the worldly life. He perhaps went to school, he went to college, he went to university. At the age of 25, perhaps if he graduated, he might start working. He will earn a little bit of a salary, he will come back. And he, if he becomes a very big businessman by the age of 45, the earliest, say 40 to 45, he now has a little bit of money and he's a happy man. He has a family, perhaps with children, and he considers himself extremely successful. The question is, how long is that success going to last? That's the question not more than 25, 35. If you're very lucky, 45 more years. If you live up to 65, they will retire you. If you live beyond to 75, perhaps you may enjoy the fruits of it, but things will start becoming into, or you will be seeing things in perspective and you will realize that true success is actually the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you that you have now achieved paradise. Because that is everlasting as compared to the 25 to 35 years that you had in this world. So those who are wealthy, those who are in authority, those who have a top job, those who have lots of qualifications, make sure that whatever you have, you use it in a way that when you don't have it, you won't regret anymore. You use it in a way that when you don't have it, at least you will say to yourself, Alhamdulillah, I spent it in such a way that eternally I will achieve Jannatul Firdaus. I will achieve Jannah. And this is why we are looking at deeds that would actually help us to earn this Jannah. I spoke last week about the tongue and how important it is to say correct words, to protect our tongues from abusing people, etc. And on top of that, to make sure the tongue is moistened all the time with the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Similarly, to engage in istighfar is a powerful way of earning Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of those who have sinned, those who committed sin in terms of immorality, whether it is adultery, whether it is uh, perhaps the watching of pornography or engaging in any form of immorality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if those people remember Allah and they repent to him and they change their ways, they do good deeds, for them will be forgiveness and paradise. This is the hope Allah is giving us. Because if Allah says only those who are good will enter Jannah, when we have made mistakes, we start thinking now I'm not good enough. So Allah says, hang on, if you have made mistakes, we will show you how to become good once again. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So one of the beautiful ways of earning Jannah is actually to seek knowledge. It is amazing how the Prophet sallallahu says, مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِّسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا Whoever treads a path in order to seek knowledge, meaning you made an effort to go and learn, you either traveled or you either spent money, effort, energy, or any of your resources included in this hadith, any resources of yours that you have spent in order to try and learn ilm, here primarily knowledge that will teach you your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being referred to. Although the scholars have included from a distance that which would be of worldly benefit alone. Remember this, that which is of worldly benefit alone, it is also important knowledge. But you cannot learn that knowledge at the expense of the Islamic knowledge. 
What this means is, when it comes to Islam, there is a minimum I need to know. It is called ma huwa ma'lumum min ad-dini bid-darura. That which is the information of this particular deen that I necessarily need to know. That minimum, I cannot know less than that. So if you're a Muslim, you say, but I don't know how to pray. You better do something about it today before tomorrow, because that's not good enough. If you say I'm a Muslim, but I don't know the six pillars of his Iman or the five pillars of Islam, then there is a problem. You need to change that immediately. This is something extremely important. So my beloved brothers and sisters, remember knowledge primarily, yes, it does include all knowledge, but at the beginning, it is the knowledge of your link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot say, I did not know this is, not sh or this is shirk, or I did not know that this is not allowed, or this is an innovation, etc., etc. You need to learn the basics at least. You need to know what is required of you as a Muslim. More than that, people specialize. Someone might become a doctor, someone might become an accountant, someone might become a plumber, someone might become something else, subhanallah, a technician, or whatever else it is no problem on condition that you have the minimum knowledge of the deen so when you make an effort to go out to learn the knowledge of the deen Allah says through that effort Allah will e make easy the path of your entry into paradise so it's one of the ways of earning Jannah to go and learn now you might ask how is that how is that let me go and learn and Allah will make my path to Jannah easy well very simply put, when you go out to learn, you will learn how to get paradise. That's why you will be able to get to paradise. For example, if I were to tell you, look, my brother, there is a destination ahead of you. And just read this map book for a little while. It will make it easier for you to get to that destination. So if you don't read the map book, it becomes very difficult. But if you spend the time, effort, energy, even if it means 15 minutes, 20 minutes to sit with someone, they can explain to you, turn left, turn right, do this, do that. And then when you get onto the road, you know how to get to that destination. The same applies. You spent the time to learn where is Jannah, where to turn, where not to turn, what to do, what not to do. So you will get to Jannah. Quite simple. That's why the hadith says, whoever treads the path of knowledge, through that treading of the path, and through the effort that the person has made, Allah's mercy dictates that that person's path to paradise will be made easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to learn knowledge. I want to pause for a moment and say, my brothers and sisters, spend the time learning the Quran learning the meanings of the Quran. Your path to paradise will be made easy. Primarily, that is the book that tells you how to get to Jannah. That is the book that tells you where to go. Spend the time learning the biography of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it will help you to become a better Muslim. You will feel appreciation. You will be able to acknowledge and understand the effort, the goodness, and all the beautiful teachings when you go through the hadith, when you go through the life of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, etc., etc. So, my brothers and sisters, make an effort. We see the Quran, you see. We see it on our shelves, in our homes. A lot of the times, we treat it as an ornament. We just read a little bit, we put it down. Come Ramadan, we will sit and read the Arabic. We've never ever thought to ourselves, let me try and look what my own Allah is telling me. We all call it Kalamullah. We believe it is the word of Allah. What is my Allah telling me? When I go back to him, I can at least say, I read the book, I understood it, I tried to put it into practice. He will say, for you is Jannah. It's over. It's over. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannah. So my brothers and sisters, make an effort to learn the Quran. Spend 10 minutes a day, not more than 10 minutes. One verse, it's a challenge that I have put forth so many times. Many people have taken it up and they have said, yes, we have definitely changed. Start off, but dedication, wallahi, 10 minutes a day with the Quran, the meaning of it. Only how many minutes? 10. If you have the time, go more. But we are not asking you for anything beyond 10. To start off with, 10 minutes a day. Inshallah, your path to Jannah will be made extremely easy by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is another way of earning Jannah. Allah is the creator. He created me, he created you. He created other human beings and he created all other creatures. Allah says, when you are merciful towards the other creatures besides you whom I have created, I will be merciful on you. Irhamu man fil ardi. يَرْحَمْكُمْ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاءِ Have mercy upon those on earth. Allah didn't say human beings. Allah didn't say Muslims alone. Allah didn't say that only a certain species. 
anything and any creature of Allah on earth have mercy on the creatures of Allah. So much so that even when for consumption we need to slaughter an animal, we need to do it in the most humane and quick, swift way. Because you need to have mercy even upon a chicken that you would like to eat. Subhanallah. This is where the rules of halal come in. If you don't have mercy on an animal, Allah will not have mercy on you. So what do you think is going to be the status of the one who has mercy on human beings as well? I want to draw your attention to a beautiful narration and there are more than one, but there is just one I'm going to mention of a man who went into a well in the heat of a desert and he decided to get some water and he drank a little bit of the water. When he came out, he saw the hadith says, فَإِذَا كَلْبٌ يَأْكُلُ الثَّرَى مِنَ الْعَطَشِ when he came out, he saw a dog that was actually sniffing into the sand because of hunger. So what happened? He says, indeed, this dog is as thirsty as I was. Let me go down again and bring some more water and let me quench the thirst of the dog. We are not talking here of human beings. We're talking of animals that we would consider lower than human beings. Okay. In fact, a dog is an animal that you and I know there are rules and regulations regarding the cleanliness, the purity, the impurity. That's the type of an animal. If Allah wanted, that could have been a chicken. That could have been a bird. It could have been a goat or a sheep or a cow or something of that nature. No, it was a dog. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided to ch choose this. Obviously, it was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who informed us of this. So the man went back into the well, he filled his boot, you know, he filled his boot or his leather sock, that which he was wearing on his feet. He filled it with water and he came out and he quenched the thirst of a dog. And the hadith says, as a result, he was forgiven. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us forgiveness because he was compassionate towards a dog. The question I have, today people are using the name of Islam to perpetrate injustices, to perpetrate heinous crimes using that name. Yet Allah says even to be kind to a dog can result in your entry into paradise. What do you think? What do you think is expected of us regarding other human beings who are even higher than dogs? Subhanallah. So my brothers and sisters, think carefully. You want to go to Jannah? You need to have compassion in your heart. The hadith says, Irhamu man fil ardi, yarhamkum man fil sama. And another narration says, La yarhamillahu man la yarhamin nas. The first one says, have mercy on, the, on those on earth and the one in the heavens will have mercy on you. Remember that. You want the one in the heavens to have mercy on you, you need to have mercy on those who are on earth. Secondly, the, uh, the next narration says, Allah will not have mercy upon those who do not have mercy on fellow human beings. I repeat, Allah will not have mercy upon those who do not have mercy on fellow human beings. There is no debate about this. Remember, you need to fill your heart with compassion. Convert the hatred that you have into mercy and compassion. It is the qualities of that heart that will primarily earn you Jannah through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us. This term of Rahmah, Rahmah and mercy of Allah, it is one of the names of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, a name that Allah loves so much. And he asks us also to show a little bit of the quality that he has. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Similarly, one of the beautiful ways of earning Jannah is to develop your character, your conduct, the way you carry yourself, the way you interact with people and with the rest of the creatures of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Narration of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, I am a guarantee, I stand guarantee of a place in paradise for the one who leaves argument for my sake, meaning for the sake of Allah, even if he is correct. You know, to argue with a fool, there is no point. The best thing, salam, and you walk away. That's the best response. But when we get stuck in the mud with foolish people, the only thing that will happen, your reputation goes, 
your health goes, your link with Allah begins to become weak because you are spending effort, energy, time that you could have used developing your link with Allah, doing something that is absolutely unnecessary. So Muhammad وسلم, says, those who leave arguments for the sake of Allah, even if they are right, I guarantee them a place in Jannah. Amazing. We're talking about how to get Jannah. The second part of the same narration, the hadith says, I am a guarantee of a place in Jannah for the one who leaves lies, even if he is joking, even if it is just joking, falsehood, total falsehood, a lie. You know, sometimes people lie to you, big lie. And then when they are caught out, they say, I was just joking. Have you heard that one? I was just joking. My brothers and sisters, those type of jokes are not welcome. You want a place in paradise? Stay away from that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May He grant us goodness and may He grant us Jannatul Firdaus. The third part of the hadith, He says, I am a guarantee of a very lofty place in Jannah to He who has perfected or who has developed His character and conduct. How you talk, how you carry yourself. Your expression on your face can become an ibadah. If you have a beautiful expression on your face, whereby positive energy is beamed from you, people look at you, they feel happy because you are smiling. Wallahi, it is an act of charity. Why? You have reached people and helped them become positive. That's why a smile is an act of charity. Because when you smile, it's positive energy being beamed. You are donating something to other people around you. What is that? Positivity. A man was sad. He looked down. He had a bit of a problem. Someone told him something. When he saw you, you gave him such a big smile, he just forgot about what happened. Didn't you give him such a big gift? Didn't you actually reach out to him in a beautiful way? Hey, when I looked at you, I really felt good. When I sit in your company, I feel so good. Amazing. That is a charity. That is something so beautiful. My brothers and sisters, this is how we will be able to earn Jannah. Develop your character and conduct. Because if you develop your character and conduct, the hadith says a man can reach the level of the pious and those who are loved by Allah, and even that of the prophets through his character and conduct. Subhanallah. Now one might ask, what if a person doesn't believe in Allah and they have developed character and conduct? It's a question. Here we are talking about how character and conduct can earn you a place in Jannah. Well, if a person does not believe in Jannah or the hereafter, then obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says he doesn't oppress anyone. He will give them what they consider as paradise. What is the aim? What do they consider paradise? This worldly life. So Allah gives them wealth. Allah gives them health. Allah gives them status. Allah gives them respect. Allah gives them various other things in this world. When it comes to the Akhirah, that's between them and Allah. Allah already told them, your coupons are spent. Your coupons are spent. You don't believe. So what was the point? Now you want to ask me for goodness. When the whole test was rotating around belief, you dropped out that belief. Because we don't oppress, we gave you what you considered the ultimate gift. A lot of people today, they live for this world. They don't live for the hereafter. So anything and everything they, want, they do is connected to happiness and goodness in the few years that they have remaining on earth. So they don't mind how they earn the money, but they want to earn it, whether by hook or by crook. You tell them about interest, you tell them about what is haram. They are definitely not interested because according to them, I need the dollar by hook or crook. May Allah forgive us. If that is the case, you will get the dollar, but with it, you will not get happiness. You will not get a lot of other things because of the crook part of that hook. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us and may He grant us ease. However, true believers, they will work hard. They will try to earn. They know life is a struggle, but they know that we are earning because we have a family to feed. We have various other duties and we will not compromise the law of Allah. If Allah said this is haram, it is haram. We will stay away from it. Even if we are losing something material because we know ultimately, primarily, we will only be gaining. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to live in this world as well as to develop our character and conduct in a way that we can achieve Jannah. Another narration I want to make mention of is where the Prophet ﷺ says, such and such a person will not enter Jannah. A person who in whose heart there is even a mustard seed's weight worth of pride won't enter Jannah. No place for him in Jannah. He first needs to go, if he's a believer, he needs to go somewhere else in order to clean himself and then he can come to Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. But if it is a person who doesn't even believe, what does he expect? The point being raised is, let's 
protect ourselves from pride, pride and arrogance. Now, one might say, I've got the best car, I've got the best house, I've got the best clothing, the best perfume, the best cell phone, and people consider me proud. So the Sahaba radiallahu anhum asked a similar question, O Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa We like that our conveyance is nice, our, our the place of staying is nice. They were worried. He says, that is not pride. Pride is when you reject the truth. That is pride. The truth is glaring you in your face, shining upon you. 40,000 watts in your face, a bulb. The, the truth is shining and you just reject it. That is pride. That is pride. No place in Jannah for such a person. Not at all. The hadith says it loud and clear. When the truth came to you, you rejected it. That is what Allah doesn't want. He sends the truth to you, not once, many, many times, through many, many different avenues in order for you to change, in order for you to realize, to understand. But no, you don't. That's it. Allah says, no place for you. May Allah protect us from pride. The second part of pride is غَمْطُ nas, Those who despise people. You make a mockery of other people, you despise them. Very unfair, unjust. If that is the case, no place in Jannah for you. May we, be, may we learn to respect one another. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. May we be from among those who can change our lives. Because my brothers and sisters, when we learn to respect one another, we have a beautiful community. When the community is beautiful, we have a beautiful ummah. When the ummah is beautiful, we have Subhanallah, fulfilled what was required of us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all Jannah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us in a way that we can be thankful to Him upon all conditions, inshallah, if given the opportunity. And if we remember, we would like to continue on some of these paths to paradise in a way that we can understand whenever we see things, how best we would earn Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the path to Jannah easy for every one of us. Remember, when you pray for someone else, the angels are saying Ameen for you as well. When you pray that someone else gets Jannah, then the, you also, inshallah, would be a person whom the dua would be befitting for, that you would also get Jannah. But it's not good enough to continue to make dua, make dua, but your life is heading in another direction. I am making dua, oh Allah, I want to go to Buloyo, take these people to Buloyo, but I'm walking towards Kariba, subhanallah. Even if I get a lift, I'm going to get to the wrong place. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Walk in the right direction, seek help, and Allah will make that path easy for you. May Allah bless us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.